All right, guys, it's Char Box Reviews coming at you guys with the Terror Season One Episode Eight review. Alright, so just like I predicted, we have another amazing episode this week. Um, I said in the last re in the review for last week's episode, I said these last three episodes are gonna be awesome, right? Like this is really setting up a really, really cool, um, you know, storyline going forward, and I really think the rest of the episodes uh, this season are gonna be awesome. And I was not wrong, right? Uh, this episode was. Um, honestly, I would say maybe the best episode of, of the, uh, of the season, and I, I don't think it is, and I don't think it's gonna end up being the best episode, I think the next two are still gonna be, you know, just as awesome as this one, maybe even better, if that's possible, right, um, so I love this episode, there was one kind of glaring thing that I didn't like about it, but it kind of, it didn't really, like, take away from this episode in general, it was just kind of my thought about where they took the story, um, but other than that, um, and that has to do with the Hickey thing, um, you know, his whole thing, but other than that, this episode was almost perf like, it was almost perfect, um, I just loved it, and the ending, of course, like, wow, like, that was just crazy, chaotic, right, um, so that was crazy, the ending, um, and that's, you know, really, you know, the episode was kind of slow up to that point, the pacing was kind of slow, and then all of a sudden, you know, all hell breaks loose, and, and it just goes crazy right at the end, so yeah, uh, so of course, we'll go through a little bit of a recap first, and then, uh, you know, towards the end, get to a rating, favorite character, and some more overall thoughts um, of the episode, and I do like to apologize for this one being a little bit late, um, I did say, um, I'm not sure if you know, uh, in my, my other videos, um, you know, people who watch these reviews may not, you know, watch the other videos, but I did say in those, um, that the reviews this week are all backed up, uh, a, a couple days or a day, uh, just because of, um, my weekend, so I kind of had to back up Let's Talk Television, so everything kind of just got backed up a, a, a day here during this week, so that's why the review is a little bit late, uh, but I did, I did see this one uh, only two days ago. I actually uh, PVR'd it and, uh, and and got around to watching it. So, uh, so yeah, um, I, and that doesn't mean I'm not interested in the show at all. I was just really, really busy, and I just did not have time to watch it. Um, so, yeah, so unfortunately, I didn't get to see it on Monday, um, but I uh, kind of made the mistake of going on Twitter, too, uh, <laughs> before I had seen the episode um, and, uh, and seen cause some, uh, some stuff, but, you know, nothing too major. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, without further ado, let's get into this episode. So, we start off with April 1848, the same day, and I just want to say here, I really appreciate this episode, this is another positive, is because in the past, I mean, there, there was a, a break in between episodes there, where I think six months passed, or something like that, like it was seven or eight months or something had passed between two episodes, I think it was episode three and episode four, when Sir John died, I think six months passed or something, in between the episodes, but in this one, we literally come back the exact same day and see, you know, what has happened, um, so I really like that, not that I don't like the stuff where they take a big break in between, but I just like this a little bit more, so you just, you know, the whole storyline, and they don't spend, and in those episodes, they kind of have to spend time recapping what has happened, you know, have a few lines telling us, you know, a story or two of what has happened in the six months, who's died, stuff like that, but in this scenario, they don't have to, right, so I just think it's a little bit better for the show in that, in that regard there, so Francis and Fitz James, so this was an awesome scene to start the episode off, I've been, um, you know, uh, raving about, you know, the Francis and Fitzjames dynamic ever since episode, like, two, I think, you know, all the way through, I've been really raving about it, saying, um, how I love it, how, how they've, you know, came so far, they transformed, and this scene is just amazing, you know, with all of the other seven episodes leading up to a scene like this, um, if you see episode one, you see how they are towards etc., and then you see this scene, it's crazy, right, the transformation that the writers have done, and it seems real, like, it actually, you know, it seems, um, you know, like, uh, like, it, yeah, it, it seems genuine, uh, you know, in the moment, so, yeah, just a really amazing job there, but anyways, so they're walking alone, they're discussing their current situation a little bit, and they're uh, going to the pile of rocks that we saw earlier in the season, checking for that letter, right, that was put in there to see if, I guess, uh, like, the, the actual people who, who they wanted to, uh, you know, uh, like, rescue them, I guess, uh, anyway, so those kind of, that kind of group of people to see if they, you know, saw the letter and, uh, and said anything, so they see the same letter that the men put in there, that their men put in there, um, and they find out that the man died the same day 
as when the letter was actually put in the rocks there. They never even, you know, made it farther than that. Um, so another disappointment, right? This, you know, last episode, I think it was last episode, or was it the episode before? It might have been, no, I think it was last episode where they came across the uh, the rescue team, right? You know, that they thought they left months ago. They thought they were on their way back with, you know, a, another uh, group of people to rescue them. And they found out that they died, you know, a week after they left. So this is just another one of those disappointments. Things are looking really bleak for them. Um, and it's, you know, not, not looking good, right? So then this whole thing, break, you know, kind of, uh, you know, comes uh, out of Fitzjames and Francis kind of, you know, just talking, you know, after they, they have another disappointment, um, just talking. So Fitzjames calls himself a fool, and Francis disagrees. And Francis kind of beating himself up here, you know. he I think he kind of feels bad, you know. He kind of blames himself for what the situation is, for what's happening right now. And he says, do you know how I was appointed to this expedition? Right, you know that this is what uh, this is what Fritz James says, and uh, yeah, he kind of belittles himself here, right? He's saying, you know, well, I don't really deserve it. He says, I saved Sir John Bower's son, so Sir John Bower, I'm guessing, is like, you know, kind of a, a big, you know, esteemed leader, I guess, in Britain, right? Um, so anyway, so he says, Sir John Bower's son from a scoundrel by chance, right? So it was just chance that I was there and I was able to save him. And then he says he was only given this position because of what he did for Bauer's family, right? It wasn't really based on his skill or experience. It was just based on what he had done for the family. And that's where he, you know, has gone, you know, so far. That's how, you know, he's he's gone to where he is in life. So that was very interesting, actually, right? Very interesting to actually learn a little bit more about Fitzjames and how he got here. Because we know a bit about Francis and we know about, about a, bit, a bit about Sir John, sorry. Um, but uh, but Fitzjames, we don't know a lot about. Uh, and then he calls himself a fake, right? He says, you know, well, I don't deserve to be here. I'm just, you know, I'm just here on, on uh, you know, because I was lucky and I, I did something for this uh, leader, right? It's basically what he's saying in here. Uh, and Fitzjames, you know, tells uh, about his trouble upbringing too, how he's not even fully English. He was adopted, and his real name, you know, probably is not even James Fitz James, and that again leads us to, uh, you know, why why the hell the guy has like the same first name and the same last name? You know, I've been questioning that throughout the series. So, just a really emotional and honest moment between the two men. Um, just really great, and this was a very emotional ending to the scene here. And Fitz James, you know, Francis coming close to him, and Fitz James says, "Are we brothers, Francis?" I would like that very much, and then they kind of hug it out, and honestly, that was a really emotional moment, and to finally see Fitzjames kind of broken down to the point where he's being honest, and he says, this is the first time I've ever told anyone about this, right, so to the point where he's being honest, and, you know, being emotional with each other, I mean, that's not the the type of behavior that these, a leader of this, you know, expedition uh, would have, right, but they're, you know, just alone, the two of them, uh, kind of in this moment, and it becomes a really good one, so, Really great scene. I can't say enough about that scene. That was really, really awesome uh, to come this far, you know, from episode one to episode eight and be able to see a, a scene play out like that. It's just insane. So then we see the two get back to the camp and they see men screaming and running away. So I really thought that this demonstrated the ongoing theme of like peace and positivity in one moment. Like things are looking up. You know, we uh, we have hope, right? Hopeful moments. And then just complete horror the next, right? Everything's going to hell and, uh, you know, and everything's wrong. So I really thought it, you know, demonstrated that because it's a really nice scene between the two. Emotional, you know, hopeful. And then they walk over the little cliff and they see the camp and all of a sudden, you know, hell, hell is breaking loose and there's, you know, horror. So really, really great job in the show continuing to do this. And I even see this again later in the show and later in the episode as well. So they do a really good job of this. So the lieutenant tells Francis, um, sorry, I think the lieutenant is named Lieutenant Little, right? I think that's his, uh, his name. But at this point, I wasn't sure about his name, but I do refer to him as Little a little bit later. Um, so anyways, Little tells Francis that the, uh, the Eskimos people, uh, killed Irving not Hickey, so that's what, that's what they think, right, that's what Hickey has told all of them, of course, we know that Hickey killed Irving, we saw it last episode at the very end there, really gruesome, right, uh, so then, uh, Little says, and they shot and killed them as a result, right, so Hickey and the other men shot and killed the Eskimo people because, you know, they killed Irving, so, uh, then he also says, Hickey was the one who saw it happen, 
right? And uh, it's more like he was the one who did it, not who saw it, you know, because, of course, we know that, um, you know, but obviously, you know, these, these uh, you know, other characters don't because no one was around, like, not even the other men from the search team were there, right? So they aren't fully sure exactly that Hickey has killed him either, although, you know, you know, put, putting two and two together here, they might figure it out, just as Francis did, right? Um, so it's very interesting, of course, that Hickey's the only one who saw it, right? And this kind of plays into Francis right away, right? So Francis goes to see the bodies um, and asks Lady Silence to come. So this was actually a very smart idea by Francis, and he displays uh, a lot of intelligence in this episode, like a lot. He, he really thinks about things and works things out really, really well in this episode to figure it out that it was Hickey, you know, not, not the uh, Eskimo people, and he does his due diligence, like, he really does, so anyways, he has Lee Science to come in, so, you know, he can ask her if she recognizes such a tactic like the one that was used, right, because it's a really gruesome tactic, and he doesn't think that the Eskimos, you know, people would do something like this, right, he thinks that it was a huge, like, a man, um, a, not a human, sorry, like a, like, you know, like a, a crew member or like a, a European, you know, thing, you know what I mean? Like not a native person, a native uh, person to the land would not do such a thing, you know, to another, uh, to another person, right? So, uh, so yeah, I mean, so at this point, he's really questioning it, right? He's really, you know, not, you know, not buying it, right? He's not buying the story that Hickey's uh, selling here, right? So he's already suspicious, and Lady Silence says no. You know, she does not recognize that, and she does not think that, uh, you know, that, that that's a tactic that they use, right? That the, uh, that the you know, native people use. So, um, yeah, obviously this is just kind of another hint toward Francis, you know, for him saying, you know, okay, um, you know, that's that's not what happened, right, so Hickey was the one behind this, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so very interesting scene there, so we see Francis, Blanky, Good Sir, and Lady Silence go to see the scene, uh, where the, uh, natives were shot along with Hickey, so they bring Hickey along to kind of see the scene and describe to them what had happened, you know, where, you know, what all went down here, so Francis is becoming very suspicious of it, right, you know, we are kind of seeing here that he doesn't really buy it. Uh, so we asked him, uh, so we asked Hickey to lead him to where Irving and Farr were killed, right? Uh, to go there uh, where the bodies were. Of course, you know, Hickey knows because he was the one who killed them, obviously. Um, and Lady Science is really devastated by the scene. We even see um, a young child was with the, uh, was with that kind of uh, Eskimo family. Um, and, uh, and the young child, uh, got shot as well, so, yeah, that was a little bit of emotional, uh, scene there, and she's obviously very devastated by it, um, and remember, she doesn't have a tongue anymore, right, so she can't talk, so, uh, she can really only kind of, um, like, you know, I, I guess we saw her, you know, kind of in tears, kind of crying, um, but she, you know, it's not like she's gonna, like, scream and, you know, say, you know, how dare you or something like that, because she can't talk, she can't really make sounds, right, because she doesn't have a tongue, and that's why she gets the name Lady Silence. So, anyways, um, but yeah, we see that she's visually uh, very, very devastated uh, by what has happened, and I think so are the other men, too. I think they feel the exact same way. Good Sir especially, I think he definitely feels uh, for what had happened. And I'm not sure if Lady Silence knew these, knew these people specifically, or they were just, you know, they're kind of the same, um, you know, kind of uh, group, right? Or the, the same kind of, um, you know, dialect or whatever, right, of, uh, of what she is. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I'm not sure if she actually specifically knew them, uh, but, you know, still devastating, of course, even if it, you know, was, was, uh, not even, you know, Eskimo people, maybe someone else who was on the land, um, you know, it's still a devastating scene to see a child like that, uh, shot and killed, so, then we see back at the camp, so, I like this in the beginning half of the episode here, where they kind of showed Francis, you know, out, you know, with, with the others, and then we saw the back at the camp, so we kind of had, like, two settings here running side by side, and I really like that, so uh, the men are becoming fearful of the Eskimos uh, that they think, you know, are, uh, are coming for them, but they're obviously not coming, right, you know, they, they, like, it's not happening, I mean, Hickey says that the they uh, they missed the one uh, the Eskimo person um, and uh, and they ran away right and so they're gonna be held a big group and now they're all gonna come for them which is not the reality at all right they shot all the the Eskimo family um, and it was a family it wasn't like a you know a fighting group right that was coming to kill them or anything so anyways of course it's all lies um, they're obviously not coming but the men 
think they are and they're fearful and I'm you know I'm not gonna you know say I mean if if um, you know you're in that situation and you have no other you know proof that they're not coming and you've heard that they may be coming I mean you know I don't really blame them for being fearful or being scared right I mean it's the situation they're in it's not their fault that they're in the situation it's Hickey's fault for lying and creating this fear that isn't really there right and I think Francis uh, really articulates that well uh, a little bit later so they want more guns so that they can defend themselves right that's the whole key here but of course Hickey and his group want guns for a little bit of a different purpose to kind of separate from the group of course uh, but the rest of them I think genuinely actually want to defend themselves and they genuinely think that there are you know the Eskimo people are actually coming for them and gonna be fighting um, and especially the fog the fog in this episode plays a big part I didn't want to forget to mention that so the fog is obviously uh, prevalent too at this point and they think because of the fog they won't be able to see them coming so that's why they need guns in order to defend themselves of course the Eskimos will not have guns so yeah that that's a big part as well so we see Fitz James in discomfort as he takes off his shirt and reveals multiple bullet wounds so I was confused by this I didn't really understand exactly um you know what what this meant right like when had he been shot um was he like did the um uh, Mr. Morphin I think he was um in episode seven and last episode <clears throat> The guy who went, uh, you know, insane and, and wanted them to, to kill him. I thought he shot the lantern, right? He shot the lantern. He didn't, you know, he didn't shoot Fitzjames, but maybe he did shoot Fitzjames. So I don't exactly know why Fitzjames is one hiding these bullets, how he got them, uh, or sorry, bullet wounds, how he got them. So that was just a really confusing thing. I hope someone maybe can explain that to me. Um, and maybe I missed something completely. I don't know. But um, I didn't really understand that part. But, you know, yeah, we saw that. And then we see the men break into the armory and they're stealing guns, right? So they're so scared and they really genuinely believe this, that they need these guns to defend themselves. And the Lieutenant Little tries to stop them. But with all the men around him, he really didn't stand a chance. Uh, you know, if he says no, what is that really going to do? Like, I'm pretty sure he would have had to shoot every one of them uh, to stop them from trying to steal the guns. Like, honestly, at that point, they were all scared and they are all worried, so they were stealing the guns, and that's just how it was going to be. So he ends up agreeing with them and gives the order for the men to arm themselves, uh, which kind of bites him in the ass a little bit later on, right? You know, kind of comes back... Um, you know, uh, on him, but not in a big way, um, and of course, you know, Francis understands that, you know, he was definitely pressured, and honestly, I, I, like, if he said no in that situation, the men may have even beat him up, like, I don't know, something might have happened there, so he just kind of agrees, and, uh, and lets them take him, so then Francis arrives back at the camp, and almost gets shot at, so that was funny, and it just shows, like, what the hell, and, and Francis is, like, like, what is going on? Like, how are we almost getting shot at here, right? So he's actually pretty mad about this uh, that we can see. And uh, and James arrives, right? James arrives, uh, you know, walks out to Francis and tells him that the men have seized the weapons from the armory and Francis is not happy with this, right? He's like, well, who ordered them, right? And he's really, you know, enraged at this because this is the exact order that he told Little and the other men to stop from happening, right? He didn't want this to happen where they would get the guns, but it was inevitable with him and James, or not uh, James, but him at least gone, right? And then also James uh, grabs Lady Silence's things um, as it would be dangerous for her to return to the camp now with all the men armed and, you know, with them thinking that the threat is the Eskimo and she being one of them. Obviously, it's not going to be safe for her. So they send her away for her own safety. Um, and we get a very emotional send-off here with Good Sir. And he says his goodbyes. Very emotional scene here. Um, you know, and he first says, all right, go. And then he kind of, you know, catches up to her and says, you know, um, you know, stay, no, like, don't go and everything like that, right? Um, so, yeah, uh, that was very emotional there. Uh, Good Sir has kind of become attached. He's kind of developed a relationship with Lady Silence. Um, now, I'm not sure on which level. Um, I would say it's more kind of like a sister and brother relationship more than, uh, you know, a girlfriend, boyfriend type of thing or, you know, husband and wife. But still, uh, you know, a relationship and uh, really tough for Good Sir to say goodbye. I don't think that's the last of Lady Silence that we will see. Uh, but for now, she is, uh, you know, kind of sent away and away from the camp. 
So then we get the ending of the episode here, kind of like the, uh, I would say the last third of the episode. Um, and this is kind of where everything happened. Like, everything went down in the last, like, third of the episode. Uh, of course, you know, we had some, you know, of that good stuff in the beginning. Uh, but this was, like, the main action and all that stuff. So, uh, main conflict, too. So, Francis is talking to the lieutenant, um, and is really outsmarting Hickey, right? Um, and sorry, he's talking to Little, the lieutenant. Uh, so he sees right through his plan. Right, so Francis, we, we know that he's suspicious of it, right? We know that he's suspicious. He doesn't really buy the story that all the other men are. But, you know, now he's actually just seeing right through it, right? Like, he knows for sure that Hickey did, like, you know, that this story is false, that Hickey was the one who killed them. Um, and, yeah, so he thinks he killed Irving and Farr to stage this whole plan and make there seem like there was something out there to fear, which created something to fear within. So those weren't the exact words, but I kind of, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> um, uh, redid those or paraphrased the, the, uh, the, the actual line from Francis, but I just thought that was so true, right? That's exactly what Hickey has done, and Francis sees right through it, right? He knows exactly what Hickey is trying to do, um, you know, and he, he creates a fear, you know, outside of the camp, right? He's saying, well, all these Eskimos are going to be coming to us now to fight us to get us back, right? And then that creates the fear within with all the men trying to arm themselves and creating chaos that, um, you know, takes away a little bit of the leadership from Francis, right? Because now all the men are armed and, uh, you know, and he doesn't have just the Marines and the, the main, you know, the high, uh, the high up men to defend, you know, against the other men. Um, so, you know, and, and credit to Hickey. I mean, his plan has kind of worked to this point. Um, if Francis, you know, wasn't, uh, as smart as he was, I mean, it probably would have worked, right? Uh, but uh, anyways, so then uh, the one of the lieutenants who's kind of on Hickey's side, he was talking to him last episode, and he kind of seemed like he, I don't think he really like necessarily agreed to, to do the plan with him, but he didn't say no, right? So like he's kind of on his side per se, and he's like, well, what proof are like of this are you saying? Like you don't have any proof, Francis. You can't say that Hickey was the one who killed them, right? And Francis is like, you know, I beg to differ, right? You know, uh, yeah, I do have proof. So they asked good sir to cut open the stomachs of the men. And I mean, for Francis to think about this again, it's like it's crazy. I mean, it's really smart. So they find the seal meat in Irving's stomach, right? And this was just a really um, kind of emotional, but, you know, kind of a um, defining moment, right? You know, where they right away, they knew okay, Hickey was the one to kill them, and, um, and Goodsir says, they fed him, and Francis says, of course they did, right, and, uh, you know, and he, and he's, you know, visually upset, too, I mean, he's mad, but he's also upset, right, because they actually did feed them, and they were helping him, right, uh, but instead, uh, you know, of course, they, they died, they got killed, they got shot, um, you know, uh, so really, really crazy, uh, stuff there. They actually did, you know, dug into his stomach and found the seal meat. Um, you know, that was, uh, that was pretty smart. Um, but, uh, yeah, of course they did. So yeah, Francis knew, right? So the men find out the real truth at this point, right? And also find out that the Marines are on Hickey's side as well. I think one of the lieutenants says that and says, well, all the Marines were the ones who let them have the guns, right? Or, or, and they're helping out Hickey. So, uh, obviously Francis says, choose men we can trust, right? Because he's like, we'll get the Marines to arrest him. Well, maybe they're not on our side, uh, right? So he's like, the, the leader of the expedition at this point, this is how good Hickey is at manipulating people. The leader of the expedition has to find specific men that he trusts now. Like, just think of that. Like, that's just totally backwards, right? So he says, choose men that we can trust. And he tells them the plan to arrest Tozier and Hickey and bring them back to the tent. And Francis intends to kill both of them. He mentions the gallows, right? So, uh, so that means, you know, the hanging. So he intends to kill both of them. I, I don't really agree with the way that Tozier and Hickey are treated equally in this sense, that they're both just dying because of what they did. Uh, Tozier uh, is the one who kind of allows the men to get the guns from the armory and kind of like gives, you know, tells them to do it. Um, but Hickey, I mean, has killed two men. He's killed a lieutenant, right, in, in Irving. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, Hickey has done way more, yet Tozier is kind of getting the same punishment. I mean, death. You can't really get anything more than that. You know what I mean? Like, especially at this camp. They're not going to keep you in a prison. Um, 
But I, I don't know. I just feel like a little backwards the way that they both got the same kind of punishment. But anyways, then we see the uh, big scene at the end. These are the last few minutes of the episode. And let me tell you, uh, they went by really, really quick because it was a chaotic ending, right? So they bring Hickey and Tozier to the uh, little gathering. Everyone's around there. And they have set up the, uh, the gallows, of course, right, to hang the men. So... We find out he's being charged with the murders of Irving and Farr, and Tozier's being charged for mutiny, right? Uh, you know, kind of uh, treason, I guess, against, um, you know, the men in, uh, in you know, in, in kind of uh, going against Francis's orders and uh, giving the men the guns, right? So the ropes are fitted uh, around, or sorry, the rope is fitted around Hickey's neck, and I guess Tozier is, like, next up, right? Uh, so Francis comes clean to the men about the rescue team being dead, and this was a big speech by Francis, actually, in this scene. He kind of, like, tells them everything that has been going on and is actually honest with them, you know, for the first time in a while, right? So he says that the rescue team is dead, right? You know, they're they're gone, right? And, and that was never, you know, they were never actually, you know, being saved. You know, they were never actually, um, you know, had a chance of people coming for them, right? And then Tozier right away exposes Francis for keeping it a secret and says, well, he found them and, you know, and, uh, and Francis has been keeping this a secret from you guys, but Francis, he sticks to it. He says he would do it again to protect their reserves, right? And he says, Francis says, now we know no one is coming for us. We must get ourselves out. And I feel like that's going to be an iconic line for the next two episodes in uh, the way they, they are fighting for their lives here and trying to get out because they know no one is coming for them and uh, they're going to have to do it themselves, right? So then Francis tells the men what is inside the bag. So we saw the bags a little bit earlier and I actually thought they were human body parts, but it turns out that seal meat is in the bag. So Hickey and his group were going to take the seal meat that the Eskimo people had on them when they killed them and shot them. They were going to take that for, them, that for themselves for their trip and just, you know, leave the men with nothing, right? So he tells them that he, uh, that, you know, and then he also says the Eskimo people uh, fed Irving, not killed him. Right, they didn't, you know, they didn't uh, viciously attack him like like Irving was. It was Hickey, and uh, and Francis is really, really angry at this point. He says that was Mister Hickey, you know, and he's yelling right, and he's saying the Eskimo people did not attack them. Right, it was Hickey who did it, and he did it for no good reason. Right, because they didn't do anything to provoke them. Uh, so he's, you know, Francis enraged that the family of Eskimo were killed just like that for no reason, right? He's really not okay with it. And then he says, Mr. Ricky lied to you because he needed to cut the legs out from my leadership. So really, you know, and that's true, right? Hickey is, that's exactly what Hickey was trying to do. Francis, again, seeing right through it. So he says that they will find another group of Eskimo, but not with dogs like Hickey among them. And that's why he needs to be killed. I really like that line. He says, you know, we're going to find, you know, these Eskimo people again, and they're going to help us, but we can't do it if we have dogs like Mr. Hickey here who are just going to kill them anyways. So... Really great stuff here. And then he asks for volunteers to man the rope. And we see pretty much every man steps forward except for, like, Hickey's group. Um, so, yeah, really crazy how Francis totally turns the tables on Hickey and, uh, you know, gets everyone to hate him. After a few, you know, a few hours ago, they were all on his side and they thought Eskimo, uh, you know, ex all the Eskimos were coming for them, right? So, like, it's a pretty, uh, you know, crazy twist. So then... Hickey is given his last words, and uh, I knew that this was a problem, because I knew that he was going to come out and say something um, that was going to get under my skin, and probably, you know, Francis and all the other guys, um, but, uh, but he says it nonetheless, he gets his last words, so he gives his sign to Billy and his men, and this was interesting, because it was just a really quick thing, but it was noticeable, he definitely looked at them and, and gave them a sign, and they kind of shook their heads back, like they knew something was going to be happening here, right? So, he tries convincing them that Francis lied to them, right? He tells them that he was going to leave before Sir John died, right? <clears throat> Damn, right? He got him there because that's actually true, right? He was he was actually going to leave and abandon the crew, right? Uh, he, sorry, uh, Hickey says he was going to abandon his ship and his men, right? You know, he was uh, he was actually going to do that, right? The, the episode three, we saw him that he was actually going to leave his ship, the Terror, um, to go off with the uh, the sledge team, the rescue team, uh, that ended up dying. Uh, so it's pretty good that he didn't, right? But Sir John died, and that's why uh, he stayed to take over the leadership. So Hickey actually knew that, and he used it against Francis, which was actually a good point. But I mean, how is that, like, how is that anywhere close to what you have done in killing two 
of the men, right, and killing all these Eskimo, the Eskimo family for no reason, right, how is that anywhere equal to what has happened? I mean, as a leader, I would say it's maybe even equal, right, to abandon your ship and crew. I mean, that's like the highest thing that you can do as a leader of the expedition. But in terms of Hickey, I mean, he done he did the worst thing that any guy could do. So I don't know. I just, I, I don't get it. Like, I get, oh, yeah, well, he exposed them. But what does that do? Like, you still were way worse than what he did. But anyways, so then all of a sudden, they hear Colin. So here, early in the episode, Collins takes this drug, and it's cocaine, or cocaine and wine or something like that. It's a mixture. And uh, so he's, like, high out of his mind, right? So he's, like, totally, you know, out of it. He's, he's you know, in another world at this point. Uh, so we just, you, you know, we hear Collins kind of laughing in the background, and it was like, oh, this is kind of weird. Like, nothing was funny or whatever. France is like, who's that? Right? Who's laughing? So he steps out of the fog, right? And we see him just kind of, you know, lackadaisical, you know, walking around, whatever. And all of a sudden, we hear the roar. Here comes the Toonbok. Here comes the monster, man. So the monster comes rushing in. And we hear the roar. And, uh, and it just comes in. And the whole rest of the episode, the, you know, last six, seven minutes of the episode were just chaotic. It was crazy. The Toonback attacked their camp. Um, really crazy stuff. So then, uh, very end of the episode here, the uh, sequence. So Francis and the Lieutenant Little rush to the armory to stop Hickey, right? Francis actually finds Hickey, taking the guns and shoots at him. And um, I really question this because, like, for a split second, Francis questioned shooting at him. Like, are you kidding? You were just about to hang the guy. And, like, I don't know. You, you really see. I, I watched it back about two or three times. And you see Francis for a split second there, like, holding back, shooting him. Like, he didn't want to shoot him. Like, I didn't get that at all. If he didn't hold back, he probably could have, you know, it, you know, went for a kill shot and killed Hickey at that point. So, I don't really get that part. But, anyways, he shoots at him and he misses, right? So, uh, so he gets away, Hickey gets away with his, uh, you know, other friend there, and his group, uh, finds a boat and are, uh, about to leave, they find this boat, they pack everything up on the boat, um, and they're about to actually leave, and they're using this opportunity of the Toonback attacking the camp, right, chaos is breaking out, no one's really focusing on them, so they're gonna take the opportunity to leave, and kind of leave the other men kind of stranded, right, so then Little finds Trozier, um, and I think he's getting a few guns together too, and they're kind of having a little conversation there, it turns out someone sneaks up behind Little and knocks him out, uh, right? So Tozier actually uh, is able to get away, and uh, Little's not able to do anything. So he returns... Sorry, I'm going over this really quick, because it was a really quick, uh, you know, sequence. So he returns to Francis. Little returns to Francis, telling him what had happened, and that the man already left. And Francis says, let them go. So that was a crazy thing, you know, to hear. You know, Francis just, you know, giving it up, right? He says, let them go. We have bigger problems right now with this monster, right? And I love this. I absolutely love this. So Fitzjames is making a final stand against the monster. He unlocks this uh, little crate with these rocket launchers in it. And he gets it set up and he's launching these, you know, rocket launchers at it. Or it looked like a rocket launcher. Um, of course, it wasn't actually. But it was crazy. I mean, this was awesome. So he actually makes contact with it on the one shot. And he seems to only wound him. I mean, this tomb bug just keeps running and fighting like... He, did, like, it looks like it doesn't even affect him, this rocket launcher, like, just, like, direct contact, and it just doesn't really affect him at all. So that was crazy, but what was even crazier is the last seconds of the episode. So the monster then finds Collins. He's still in his state, of course, so he's kind of running around and does some weird stuff, and then eventually the Toonbok, of course, catches up to him and kind of gets him on the ground and just tears him apart. I mean, we actually haven't really seen the Toonbok um, actually kill someone, right, and actually, like, eat them up and, you know, just tear them apart like, you know, he does. Um, so that was very interesting. That's the first time we saw that. But then at the very end here, it looks like he's tearing them apart or whatever, and then all of a sudden he kind of stops and looks directly in Colin's face, and it looks like he's sucking the soul out of him. Like, what? Like, that was a crazy thing there. And then we see Trozier actually see it. He sees it happen, and you just see his face, his reaction to it, and it's like, wow. Like, this is, like, it's crazy. I mean, his reaction is just horrifying, and he runs away, right? He runs for his life. Um, and this was crazy, and then the episode ends just like that. So, 
and it was crazy to see that Colin's face, you know, he's he obviously he's, he's still alive at the moment, right? But he's getting teared apart, right? Torn apart, sorry. He's in a lot of pain. He's, you know, kind of screaming, right? And then all of a sudden, this Tumbak kind of sucks the soul out of him, and he's just gone. Like, he, you know, his, his body just stops moving, his face is frozen, and he's done. He's gone. So, it's crazy stuff here. And this, of course, leads us to asking some more questions about the Toon Block. Crazy ending the episode here. Um, crazy ending to the chaos at the end of the episode. Alright, so in terms of rating for this episode, I'm going to give it a 4.8 out of 5. Um, like I said at the beginning, I thought this episode was almost perfect, except for the one glaring thing, and I'll quickly just touch on that now. Hickey's storyline played out very quickly, um, and I wasn't sure I'm actually, if, I'm not sure that I was a fan of this. Um, now, does this actually affect this episode that much? Just as an episode looking at it, you know, ob ob objectively? Um, I wouldn't say so. Right, because I think the episode, the actual material in it was very good. Um, but I just would have liked to see Icky's storyline played out a little bit more. I thought that it may even be resolved in the finale. Like, I thought that's how big of a thing it was. But in this episode, it's just kind of resolved. It's not a huge deal. Of course, you know, they, they're trying to hang him to kill him. So it is kind of a huge deal. But it's not like a, a huge prolonged kind of line, a storyline here, um, kind of a plot um, instead. You know, and I really would have liked it to be. I felt like it was a very interesting thing that they started last episode. And I just felt like they kind of ended it too quickly. Um, so that was a little bit, um, that was pretty much one of the only negatives of the episode. I thought it was a... Uh, Really, you know, a really strong episode. Chaotic last few minutes were awesome. Just everything going wrong. I mean, men being torn apart, tents being torn apart from the camp. The Toonbok is on the loose, and he's, you know, and he uh, he's coming with a vengeance, right? And I'm guessing he's there because of the Eskimo family that was killed, right? I think that's kind of the whole thing, you know, that that uh, the kind of the the glaring, um, you know, fact that we're supposed to realize, right? Is he comes right when uh, you know all these uh, or not all of these, but the the family of the Eskimo most people um, are killed, right? So it's kind of retribution, revenge, per se, right? Francis and Fitzjames, that scene at the very beginning and throughout the episode is just awesome. Their relationship, the di the dynamics between the two. Um, so yeah, really, really crazy stuff. Uh, or not crazy stuff, but really, like, good. And it, it's, it's crazy because if you think of it, episode one and now episode eight of how far they've come, how this has developed, the relationship between the two, um, it's crazy, right? It's crazy to see how far they've come. Um, so yeah, so the chaotic last few minutes, Francis and Fitz James, and also leads us to ask you more questions about the Toon Bok this episode, and I love when they focus on the Toon Bok. I thought the last couple episodes were a little bit kind of down, because they haven't been focusing on this monster as much, uh, but I mean, he came back with a vengeance in this episode, um, and it was really awesome, so again, you know, we kind of ask, is it a spirit? I mean, if it's, it looks like it's like sucking the soul out of these men uh, when it kills them, right? So is it a spirit, maybe? Or is it, you know, my question is, is it sucking, you know, as many souls as have been taken? You know, the Eskimo family, I think five or six of them were killed. So maybe is he trying to get the souls uh, from six men back to kind of equal that out? I don't know. It might be a crazy theory, but it might actually be true. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I would go with, I think it's a spirit. Because Fitzjames, the rocket launchers, don't seem to affect it. It seems to just keep going. And now it looks like it's sucking souls out of things. So obviously it's not just a super polar bear like some people say it is, right? It's obviously something more than that, um, which is crazy. And I hope next episode we get a little bit more of the uh, of the Toonbok and see a little bit more of, uh, of what it really is, right? Favorite character of this one is going to be Francis. Um, I feel like I've focused on him a little bit uh, so far in the season, but I have to pick him again because, I mean, he's doing, uh, Jared Harris doing an amazing job with him. Um, and Francis, like I said, the, the dynamic with Fitz James, the way that he outsmarts pretty much all the other men in this episode um, and seeing right through Hickey's plan and being able to kind of pinpoint exactly, um, you know, what had happened, right, and, and prove it, too, and being able to prove it to the men, so really great job here by Francis, great leadership, and we've seen that from him ever since Sir John has died, maybe except the part where he was, like, you know, an alcoholic for uh, <laughs> like a few months, uh, but no, it seems like he's back now, um, and uh, and he's really, you know, strong and, and really, you know, a good leader, so anyways, uh, and yeah, Jared Harris does an amazing job, doing an amazing job again in this episode, um, I gotta check out more stuff with him, because he's, like, really, really impressing me with this series, uh, same with Tobias Menzies, he's doing a great job as well, but anyways, that'll just about do it for the review for this week's episode, again, I apologize for 
being uh, sorry. I apologize for it being late um, again, but uh, next week it should be on time on uh, on Tuesday. Um, so yeah, please uh, look out for that one. And we only got two episodes left. I'm really excited for this. Uh, you know, the next two episodes, and I think they're going to be pretty freaking awesome. So uh, yeah. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support on the channel. I can't thank you guys enough. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next week for the Terror Season One, Episode Nine.